Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Inter, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm bringing you a guide on something that almost every Smite player struggles with, and that's sieging. We've even seen it in the SPL recently, with the Jade Dragons dominating early game but failing to break the base and eventually losing. In this guide, I'll go over what every Conquest Wall's job is on a siege, as well as some tips to take those birds more effectively. Alright, so let's start off with the basics. What is your job on a siege as every single role? Starting off with the most obvious, the ADC or carry's job on a siege is to do the structure damage. They do far more than any other class from range and are the best way to take down phoenixes effectively. If you can't get to the phoenix, just try and poke and or shred the tanks if they're standing in front of the phoenix, stopping you hitting it. Keep in mind that your own tanks are likely eating a lot of damage from that phoenix though, so your main priority is to hit the bird if at all possible. On to those tanks though, the solo laner's job on sieges is mostly to tank the phoenix. This is assuming your solo is a traditional tank or bruiser and not a full damage solo pick of course. The solo can zone enemies away from defending with CC and or damage as well. Keeping the mage out is especially very useful since mages are the way you clear enemy minions on defense for the most part and of course if your minions die the phoenixes regain their backdoor protections and take half damage so keeping them alive is key for sieging. The support can fill a similar role but is slightly different. Support is of course also tanky and so can tank the phoenix hits if the solo is low HP or otherwise occupied zoning the backline. Support has to be a little more careful though as you need to stay within peel range of your ADC and to a lesser extent your mid to protect them from enemy solos and junglers diving them on defense. I say especially the ADC because of course they do the main structure damage and will also shred the titan the quickest if you do get a chance to end. Sorry mid laners but the ADC is simply higher priority for peel on sieges. On to the mid though, their job when sieging is mostly to poke. Most mages have great range and can poke enemies to prevent them from defending or shredding your tanks. Make the enemy scared to step up and defend for fear of their life, that's the mid's job. Pay attention to your solo and jungle to try and combine your damage with their CC and damage to score kills which can snowball into a win very quickly. If you have nothing else to do as the mid hit the phoenix, but your damage is far less than the ADC and you're best served with poking and bursting enemy gods. And finally, probably the most complex role to siege with, the jungler. The way the jungle plays does depend on your god a little bit. If you can poke effectively, doing that will help a lot, but if you're an all-in character like a lot of assassins, you're looking for that entry into the fight after your solo engages or your mid pokes someone out. Assassins are the only melee class that isn't tanky, so trying to hit the phoenix is very risky and should only be done if you know you're safe. There's a small exception for basic attack junglers in a certain way where it can be very useful to add your structure damage to the ADC, but do it carefully. I see too many junglers walk into phoenix and hit it against 5 and just get nuked. Alternatively, and I'll talk more about this in the tips section, the jungler can split push a different lane and use their high mobility to still reach the main fight very quickly if an enemy rotates to stop them. Alright, so that's the gist of what every role should be doing on sieges, let's move into some more advanced tips and tricks to help you break the base. Tip number 1, you should generally siege duo side phoenix first if possible because it's furthest from the fire giant. This means if you take that phoenix, when the enemy has to defend the next fire giant spawn, it's going to be very difficult for someone to go back, defend those fire waves and still get back to the fire giant fight quickly and can often make a 5v4 and just force them to leave you to get fire giant. With a side phoenix down, you have more room for your solo and jungle to flank around and make space, which makes taking the mid phoenix a lot easier as well. Tip number two. So I mentioned this in the jungler section, but most junglers have high mobility and thus are very good at split pushing minions up a different lane while your team does the main siege. This either forces an enemy to deal with you or gets you a free phoenix while you as the jungler have the high mobility needed to easily join the main fight if you get stopped out. This is mainly for if there's downtime on a siege while your team waits for minions or something since junglers are very all in and most lack good poking so just sitting there with your team while your mage pokes and your tanks wait for minions isn't that useful. May as well shove minions up in an adjacent lane to force defense from the enemy and make it easier to take that phoenix after the main siege. Tip number 3, a siege doesn't have to always result in a titan kill. Sometimes taking one or two phoenix is fine as it gives you pressure to get other objectives, extend your gold lead, back for items, maybe wait for an enhanced fire fire giant and then siege again to take down the weakened phoenixes and go for the end. Don't be too greedy and get reverse ended on. With how strong shutdown is right now, a wipe can equalize the game or even lose you the match if it's very late game. Tip number 4, you can also just avoid sieging altogether by baiting enemies into a fight outside their base. 
If they try to contest fire, force a fight, or even ambush them in the enemy jungle. Even if you don't wipe in these fights, taking out one or two key players can make sieging so much easier. Especially if you get the mage, since as we talked about before, the mage on defense is the one that mostly kills the minion waves to keep backdoor protections up. This strategy of forcing a fight or ambushing instead of sieging is really good if you realize your team can't siege for shit and you don't have the coordination for it, which happens a lot in ranked and casuals. It's a lot easier to win a jungle team fight when you're ahead than it is to siege. I've won many ranked games we would have lost by doing this. And finally, tip number five, get some damn sentry wards. You should literally always have two sentry wards on either side near the base doors. If the enemy has any brain at all, they'll be warding these areas when you're sieging so they have vision of your team's rotations and your jungler as they often like to lurk in this area looking for a way into the fight. Removing this vision from the enemy will help massively on sieges. If you have spare wards, you can also drop them between the enemy phoenixes to get vision of defenders as they rotate between phoenixes and try and catch them out for a pick. Getting a pick makes sieges infinitely easier, especially if it's the mage as I've mentioned before. But that's all I've got for this guide on how to siege and smite. It's one of the most complex aspects of the game and it's ever changing as the team sieging is at an inherent disadvantage and I see so many teams, including SP teams like the dragons as we've seen recently fall at this last hurdle and lose the game because of it. It happens to me too and I'm by no means a god of sieging but hopefully these tips and general pointers for your role will help you out next time you come face to face with the enemy base. Catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.